Hello and uh, welcome to a quick video about a question I got uh, last week or the week before about the difference between um, a project plan and MS project. So for some reason there are some confusion related, related to this and um, I just want to set a few points straight about this. So uh, MS project is a tool um, and what I normally get from students when I ask for a project plan, I get something like this. This is a really nice Gantt chart where we have some faces and we have some um, and we have chopped up the different faces into subcategories and so on. And sometimes we even have who does what. We actually have the project manager and so on in this one. So this is a really nice um, Gantt chart showing uh, how they are going to spend their time and how the resources are allocated. Um, this is of course a really important part in a project plan, but a project plan will include so much more than this. So I have made a, um, <clears throat> it's called the template, a uh, things to think about um, when, um, when doing a project plan. So um, First of all, one of my main problems with just looking at an image project is the entire concept of stakeholders. Um, as you uh, can see here, I've made a nice diagram about um, uh, how I consider stakeholders. So when you make a project where only you and you are discussing what's going on with whatever resources you have, <clears throat> and then at the very end, you deliver something to say a customer you are almost ensuring that you get this echo chamber effect among the project participants and it will be fairly common for the primary delivery to the customer to be um, probably not what the customer envisioned. So for some, so the, the trick to solve this echo chamber thing where you guys agree with yourself about what, um, what is expected of you is to include outside people. So somehow you need to be, th these other stakeholders just examples, but somehow you need to get input from the outside to ensure that what you do makes sense and that it actually follows what you have agreed upon. Um, there are different ways of doing this and uh, we'll get back to that later. But um, the, um, let's start here. So when you, def let's do the overview actually, this guy. So. Whenever you have a project, you have some sort of setting for this project. So when I'm describing here, it's not a multi-million dollar project. Then you will use some of the um, Prince2 or some of the other project management tools. This one is all the questions you should ask yourself when you do um, smaller projects. And this would be in SMBs also, stuff that takes multiple weeks with multiple uh, participants. You should ask yourself these questions. So. I will start with the background, the setting, why um, what this project, which which setting is this in, is this in a company or what is it? This is something you should know when you start your project. Then we have the concept of a purpose. So why are we actually doing this project? Um, so um, an important thing here is the deliverables. So whenever you create a project, you have a reason to do this. And that usually includes that you want to give something to someone. Normally in a project, we'll call this the customer. Okay. When you have decided on the, uh, I'll just go back here. When you have decided on purpose, you need to be concrete about the goals that you are trying to achieve. So when we're discussing goals, we are usually talking about smart goals which would be specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time bound. This is usually what we use for tasks, but for goals, it works as well. Um, vague goals are bad, verifiable goals are good. So when you define your goals, you must be specific about what you're trying to achieve. And it must be obvious or described how you verify that you have achieved the goal. Then we'll get to the schedule. And here, an MS uh, project uh, Gantt chart could make sense. So this would be uh, where you make the um, initial timetable about when 
uh, how long you have, uh, what kind of milestones you have, what kind of resources you need on the way, and so on. The organization is about who is included in this, who is inside your project, who is outside your project. Um, budget and resources, more or less the same thing. Do you need specific resources um, that you need to attain? Uh, do you need permission for people to get these resources? Is it external people? Do you actually need money in this project? Not all, but not all projects need um, uh, cash budgets. It might be how many hours you need. The risk assessment. This is um, where you evaluate the risks um, of not attaining your defined goals. And whenever you have defined a, oh, sorry, identified a risk, you must write down and at least consider how you will handle this risk. Very often, uh, these risks, they will reflect back on the schedule somehow. It might tweak the goals just a bit. It might include other stakeholders, might include some communication. Uh, so this is not a one-shot plan. You make the plan, then when you get to the risk assessment, oh, I need to tweak the plan in order to include, for example, extra communication. Stakeholders, as I mentioned, is very important. The more external stakeholders you have, um, it will of course be annoying to have people butting in on your project. But uh, if you find the correct stakeholders, they will contribute in a good way to the project. Uh, we have different kind of um, stakeholders. I call them internal and external, related to a project group. Um, positive and negative, are they working with you or against you? And are they active or passive? This is uh, questions you should ask yourself. If you get, if you end up with a stakeholder list of, um, oh sorry, if you end up in a stakeholder list where you only have internal people, it's probably not going to be a good project. Then you are not delivering anything to people outside. Whenever you have a customer identified, then you already you have somebody outside your project, and then. You might want to include him at some point in the um, project plan, or oh, sorry, in the uh, in the schedule that you actually talk to him. Actually, this is the next point that would be the communication part. So when you have identified your stakeholders, how are you communicating with these stakeholders? So it could be um, if you had some sort of agile, um, uh, what's it called, project management model then you will talk to the uh, customer every two weeks or something similar in order to decide which tasks are up next and which um, which tasks are to be included in your next sprint. Um, communication would also be uh, that we need to write stage reports. It could be that we have informal communication with some of the stakeholders. It could be that we have morning stand-up meetings in order to coordinate. There could be a lot of different things, but all of this is communication among people, among the stakeholders. That is really important to um, establish that so that you have this feedback thing in your system that ensures that you are on the right track. This would be something you identify in the risk assessment that, oh, we are only talking to ourselves in this project, so we might just cook up something really unuseful by anyone. You can handle that by communicating with uh, your users, having a proper test procedure where you include the users in whatever you're doing. Perspectives. This is always nice to have where what kind of um, long term benefits would there be for this? And then the evaluation. How do we evaluate whether or not um, this project went well? Again, evaluation would reflect a lot on the goals. And uh, some will have an end report and it needs to be approved by the board or you will need to do some survey or something similar in order to evaluate whether or not this was a success. And references is always a good thing to have. Um, to read more, go here. So this project plan outline that I just shown here, if you're going to make a three day project, you might not want to do this. If you're going to do a three week project, you kind of need to consider these things. Sometimes you need to think about them and not write anything down. But I would suggest until you are really comfortable doing um, this uh, project definitions, as I call it, that you just write everything down. It can take as little as two hours and copy and paste it off from last time. But this is a tool for you and your other uh, project uh, team 
members to be in agreement about what you're doing. So this project plan is either for internal use only or for you and selected stakeholders so that everybody is in agreement about what you're trying to achieve and what you need to do it and what they can expect from you. Um, I hope this uh, clarifies what a project plan is and um, why our MS project Gantt chart is part of the um, schedule and not a project plan in itself. So, um, as always, if you have questions, put them in the comments. Thank you.